okay, this is probably going to be, hopefully, my last video before we get into the real juicy C++ stuff. We're going to learn now about the switch statement. The switch st statement could help us when, for example, we have a whole lot of if statements, uh, one after the other. Like, for example, if you, uh, if you have, for example, a main menu of your game, and you have ten options of what the the player can choose which game to play and then you have to get some of his stuff that he's gonna type in he's gonna type in probably like a number like one or two or three and then you have to test exactly what's the number that the user typed in and you're gonna have to test if he typed in one then go to this game if he typed in two go to the other game if he typed in three go to that game etc 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 you're gonna have to test each one of these uh, situations so the switch statement could make things a little bit easier in such types of situations. In situations where you are expecting a lot of many different situations, each one requiring a different set of actions. So here's how it works. You type switch, and then you have opening and closing parentheses. And in here you will have a, a any type of expression which has to express a number, a integer type of variable. So, for example, if you have your uh, menu choice variable set up from before, so you could put the variable choice inside over here, and that's the variable which will be uh, evaluated for this switch statement. How does it work? So here we go. Opening brace and closing brace. And inside over here, you can start organizing all of your different cases. So, going on with the example that you have a main menu with 10 different games you can choose, so here's how you would probably do it. Case 1, and then a colon. So this basically means that in the case that choice evaluates to 1, which means that, for example, when you got the user's input, when you typed in CIN choice, and you were waiting for the... Uh, player to type something in, and now you have to check out what is it that the player typed in. Maybe he typed in one or two or three. So here's where you evaluate the case in which choice matches the number one. Or if you already made some different variables like menu item one equals one, so you can test the case if choice is equals to menu item one, which is a variable whose expression at this point is 1. So it's the same thing. Basically, this is instead of the if choice is equals to menu item 1, over here it's with switch choice case menu item 1. So here's where re we replace the if statement. Okay, and then we have the colon, and right over here is where you could start taking your action of what you'd like to do if choice equals to menu item 1. So for example, you might have a function which uh, goes to the first game. Do first game and we call that function. And that's pretty much it. Then we can go on to case 2 and then you will do second game. Oops. There we go. So again, this has to be some sort of expression which will be tested for the rest of the switch statement. Every case will be tested against this expression over here. And every case has to have its own expression. It could be either an actual number or a variable or whatever gives us an expression of some sort of a number that is comparable to this expression over here. So the program will test every one of these cases is choice equals to menu item 1 then we'll do this if choice equals to this thing over here then we're gonna do this if it equals to 3 then we're gonna do something else etc etc whatever you'd like the action to be taken when that thing is true so this pretty much automatically handles all of your if statements to test if uh, if the choice is this or if the choice is that etc etc you just have to provide the correct expressions like the variable over here and these variables or expressions over here and then you just have to give it the actions to be taken and the switch statement will do it all for you.
sorry. Yeah, so uh, where was I? The switch statement actually will go through each of these cases one after the other. It's called falling through one case and the other, which means the switch statement will test this case and do that. And then it'll test this case and do that. And then afterwards it'll test this case and do that. Of course, if they match, if it's true. But sometimes, probably in most cases, you wouldn't want that to happen. You would want only one single situation to be possible, and then we're done. And then we want to go out of the switch statement. Though initially the switch statement doesn't do that. The switch statement will just fall through every single one of the cases. So, for example, in our game, it's not possible that the choice is also this and it's also that. So how do we stop the switch statement from actually testing each and every possibility when we know very well that it's not possible? So the way you can do this is just by adding the break statement, which also works in the switch statement. Uh, what this will do is that after each case, you make sure that the switch statement will exit right away and will not continue testing other possibilities which we know are not possible. So what happens right over here is that as soon as we hit the break we skip right away to the end and we continue the program. Uh, don't get confused, even though the break statement works in every loop and the continue statement also works in every loop, in the switch statement only break works, continue does not work, keep that in mind. Um, and guess what by the way, sometimes you will end up in situations where you would like the switch statement to test uh, one situation and then maybe another situation and another situation. For example, if your menu will have like a boolean choice, which uh, you will probably choose like either 0 or 1 for whatever reason, and then when you will s check the choice, you'll probably have a whole bunch of cases which are either true or false, which are either 1 or 0. So you can have like 0 like a couple of choices of 0 and then probably a couple of choices of 1 and you would want the switch statement to go through all of the 0 cases and do them if our choice is 0 and you would want it to do all of the 1 cases if our choice is, c is 1 so in that case you would take away the break statement and you would let the switch statement fall through every single situation and test them all if it's true if it's if it's one then we'd like to do whatever action is over there if it's zero we're gonna do whatever action is in the zero compartment so that's the difference of using the break statement or not which means whether the switch statement will continue testing through all of the cases or whether whether it'll stop right there and go down to the closing brace and continue the program and another useful thing you can use in the switch statement is the default case, which uh, is just pretty much a useful situ situation case to use if all of your cases uh, fail, if nothing equals to the switch statement expression over here. So this is how it works, you, ty how it works. You, you just type default and the colon, and then which basically means that if all else fails, if none of the cases happened, then do whatever it is you have to do in here. Um, so this default thing will only happen if nothing else was chosen. Whether you're using the break statements after each case or not, if anything was executed, if, if anything was if anything was, f was found to be a match with the expression, then this will not be executed. If nothing worked, if all else fails, then by default this is what what's going to be taking place. Now because the switch statement just goes through everything piece by piece, you could have many actions taken inside of cases and just type them up one after the other. However, it's clearer and sometimes mandatory that you use um, braces to envelop all of your code inside of a uh, single segment single code block which makes things a little bit clearer for each case we see exactly what is going to happen in that case especially if in a certain case you will be creating a variable um, you better make sure that you wrap this up in in braces in a code block because when you create a new variable there can be scope problems with the other cases so you have to put it inside braces unless you get a compiler error I'm sorry or else you'll get a compiler error